One day, Mullah was busy reading books in his living room. At that time, he heard somebody knocking at his door. He opened the door and saw the king's messenger waiting with an order from the king. Mullah received the order and found that he was entrusted with the job of giving lectures at the mosque on every Friday. The king had thought that Mullah could speak and educate people with his wise nature, intelligence and presence of mind. Mullah accepted the king's order unwillingly because he felt it would be difficult to lecture for an hour about general moral every week. On a Friday, Mullah started to the mosque from home. While traveling, he was deeply thinking about on what to talk. He reached the mosque very soon. He walked to the dais and sat quietly after passing through the crowd waiting to hear his lecture. Mullah looked at everyone with confidence. What will I talk today? Dear men, do you all know what I am going to talk today? No sir. Immediately, Mullah stood up. The hall became soundless. Everyone looked at Mullah's face curiously and waited for the words to come. Dear men, I am very sorry. I am not ready to talk to people who don't even have the idea on what I am going to speak. Hearing this, people were stunned. Everyone in the mosque were puzzled. Before they could react, Mullah walked off from the dais and left the place. The next Friday came and the people gathered in groups and read quotes from the Holy Quran and sat in the mosque eagerly expecting Mullah. Just like the previous Friday, Mullah started from the home without preparing anything. He entered the mosque without any clue about what he was going to talk about. My dear men, I hope you are all clear this week. Do you know? What am I going to speak today? Yes sir, we have read some important quotes. Immediately, Mullah stood up. My dear men, since you have read everything, I don't think it is necessary for me to talk on anything further. Mullah walked out from the mosque. We were surprised at Mullah's behavior. The third Friday arrived. Everyone was eagerly waiting for Mullah. Even this week, Mullah did not prepare anything. My dear men, do you know what I am going to talk about this week? There was confusion in the crowd. Some of them wanted to say yes, but some wanted to say no, recollecting the previous week's incidents. Yes sir, no sir, yes sir, 
No, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. My dear men, people who have already studied, please teach the men who have not studied. This is what the Quran says. If you have something which others do not have, please do not hesitate to share it, be it money or knowledge. This is what I wanted to explain to you. That's the reason I didn't talk to you all these three Fridays. I hope you will understand with this example. How nicely he has made people understand the morals of Quran. Mullah is a great man. Mullah Nasruddin's stories have touched cultures around the world. They are told and retold endlessly in the tea houses, caravan serias, homes and on the radio waves of Asia. The great aspect of Mullah is that he was not a great learned man. In spite of his ordinary background, he was very popular, not only because of his humor, but because of his high reasoning power and his ability to make even the common man understand the facts very easily. No one knows to which century he belonged, but his activities which were depicted as stories will be told forever and ever.